So we begin with a situation most of you have probably been in. You're on a plane traveling to a distant land, and on the main screen your pilot shows where the flight is on the earth, the path that it has taken, and the path that it tends to go. You may have seen something like this. So why aren't we just taking the path from here to here? Before you start formulating a massive conspiracy in the airline industry, you may want to learn up on one of the oldest mathematical topics and see the actual reason why. The word geometry means measurement of the earth, and spherical geometry is nearly as old as Euclidean geometry, the geometry most people are formalized with. Although the postulates that define spherical geometry are similar to those of Euclidean geometry, the geometry behaves in a much different way. There are many counterintuitive properties that navigators in the past had to deal with due to the fact that it is very difficult to project a three-dimensional object onto a two-dimensional plane. In this presentation, we will explore spherical geometry, how it's different from our normal view of Eucl Euclidean geometry, and how it helps navigational methods even to this day. So what actually is spherical geometry? Spherical geometry is just two-dimensional geometry that takes place on the surface of a sphere, and is one example of non-Euclidean geometry. Like any type of geometry, there are certain axioms that describe how that geometry is defined. The axioms for spherical geometry are very similar to those of normal Euclidean geometry. We'll briefly go over some of the more interesting relations between the two. The first, a straight line segment can be drawn joining any two points. In Euclidean terms, this makes sense. If we have two points, we can just draw a straight line to connect them, no matter the location of the points. It's a little more difficult to imagine this in spherical geometry, since we naturally think that, since a line is on the surface of a sphere, it is inherently curved and so cannot be straight. However, these lines are still counted as straight, and any two points on a sphere can be connected by a straight line. Very specific straight lines, in fact. Keep this in mind, we'll come back to it in a little bit. Additionally, in spherical geometry, we have the concept of great circles. Imagine the intersection of a plane with a circle. There are two different options for what this forms, right? If the plane just touches the sphere, the intersection will only be a point. But if you imagine the plane cutting through the sphere, the resulting shape will be a circle. Now imagine the plane intersects the sphere and also intersects the center of the sphere. The circle that's formed would divide the sphere into two equal hemispheres and would have the same radius as the sphere itself. We call these circles great circles. In spherical geometry, we consider great circles to be analogous to lines, and so we describe the geometry in terms of points and great circles. Another way to think about lines is that in Euclidean geometry, we can extend a line segment indefinitely. But in spherical geometry, we see that when we extend a line indefinitely, the line connects with itself. Euclid's first axiom can be rewritten for spherical geometry in terms of great circles. That is, for any two points, there exists a great circle that connects the two points. Or in other words, a straight line in spherical geometry is a great circle. The shortest distance between two points on a sphere always lies on a great circle. Here's a fun fact. All of Earth's longitudes are great circles, but the equator is the only latitude that is a great circle. You might want to start thinking about this in relation to the problem of navigation we discussed earlier. The other Euclidean axiom to consider is Euclid's fifth axiom, which states, for a point P 
and align L such that P is not on L, there exists one and only one line M such that P is on M and M is parallel to L. Since spherical geometry is described in terms of great circles, this axiom can't hold. Two distinct great circles will always intersect at two points along the sphere. These two distinct points are known as antipodal points, meaning they are the farthest possible distance away from each other. The corresponding axiom in spherical geometry is that there are no parallel lines. So for example, Triangles in spherical geometry are described as the intersections of three great circles. Because of this, the sum of the interior angles of spherical geometry triangles can end up being greater than 180 degrees. And in fact, you can even have a triangle composed of three right angles. To explain this, suppose we're all great swimmers and we start at the North Pole and go down to the equator and turn 90 degrees east and walk and swim again a quarter around the Earth. All we would need to do again is to walk 90 degrees north and walk to the North Pole again. This creates a triangle path with 90 degrees for all angles. Let's now return to our air travel example from the beginning of the video. In spherical geometry, the shortest distance between two points on a sphere is along the great circle connecting them. Since the Earth is just a giant sphere, this means that the shortest path between two cities isn't always as it seems. So imagine you're taking a plane from Florida to the Philippines. Your first instinct might be to draw a line directly from Boca Raton to Manila. However, the flight path that planes actually take goes over Alaska in the process. This is because the great circle that connects Boca Raton and Manila, our two points in this example, passes through Anchorage as well. Here's a better illustration of this plane trip. So now, whenever you're on a plane, you can explain to the people around you that you are in fact getting to your destination through the shortest path. 